Welcome home to Radiant Life Church, where everyone counts. We're so glad you're taking the time to join us today for our online service. The kids are out of school this week for fall break. Woohoo! Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> big deal. Our family's decided to take a little time and slip away to the mountains. Maybe you'd like to have a little getaway. What about walking in the footsteps of Jesus and worshiping on the Sea of Galilee? Would you like to go with me to the Holy Land? Well, we're going to be going April 19th through the 30th, and I would love for you to join me. If you would like more information, please just send an email to office at rlclodi.com and be sure to include the words Holy Land in the subject line. Yeah, you know, we've started this series about finding joy and I want to share this verse from Psalm 16 verse 11. It says, you make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. You know, as we spend time with the Lord, he fills us with joy. We talk about, you know, feeling happy and all of that is so fleeting. It mm -hmm. just, you know, kind of comes and goes. But the joy of the Lord is something that can sustain us and can be constant um, as we spend time in his presence. So I want to encourage you today, take that time, spend time with the Lord, um, and he will fill you with that joy that you have been seeking. Absolutely. Well, let's do that right now. Let's take some time with the Lord. Would you bow your head with us as we approach God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you for your love and mercy. And Lord, we thank you that we can come to you all the time. And God, that you fill our cups to a point of overflowing. Lord, I pray that you would fill us with greater joy during this season. God, we are expecting you to do awesome things in our lives, in our church family, in our community, Lord God, across this nation and around the world. Lord, nothing is impossible for you and the best truly is yet to come. Yes, and Lord, I just lift up our church family to you. God, what a joy it is to be able to do life together. Even though life looks differently in this year than it has ever before, God, I pray that you would continue through your Holy Spirit to knit our hearts together, to bring us together in unity, Lord God. And I pray, Father, that you would just, through your Holy Spirit, continue to grow us deeper in relationship with you, God. May we just be a light in our community, in our families. And Lord, may you just pour out your blessing upon each family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's take a few minutes and worship together with Grace and Russell. Hello, Radiant Life Church. It's so good to be back with you again today. Or tonight, whenever you're watching this. We're just gonna go ahead and enter on into worship. And, uh, Wherever you are, wherever you're at, if you're in the living room or in the car or on the couch, whatever's going on, let's just go ahead and pray. Let's just go ahead and get on into this thing. Jesus, thank you. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment. Whether it's been a good week, been a bad week, whatever it's been, Jesus, we thank you that you are there. Whether we like it or not, whether we want to call upon you or not, Jesus, we thank you that you are there, that you will never leave us, Jesus, that you'll never forsake us. And that's a promise, God. We ask that you would help us to remember that. That you would just help us to hold on to it. You would help me to hold on to that, Jesus. Father, we just ask that your spirit would just go ahead and enter in on to wherever we are. Let it be tangible, Jesus. Let us be able to feel you, God, in these moments. In the name we pray. Amen. This is one that um, was probably one of the first ones I ever did. Uh, to start leading, so this is something that's uh, pretty special to me. But it should be one that you would know, so let's go ahead and go ahead and get on into it. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the dark out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you 
today. You see, before Pastor Ani Ansi and I came to Radiant Life Church in 2015, there was an incredible interim pastor named Pastor Vic Quantania. And today, Pastor Vic is going to share a message from Philippians chapter 1 on the theme of finding joy through adversity. Here's Pastor Vic. Hi, it's great to be here at Radiant Life today. I am excited to uh, be and have the honor to preach the word. I wanted to talk about adversity. Okay, uh, finding joy through the adversity. And we're going to be reading out of Philippians chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 15 through 30. And I want to talk about comfort. I am a person that loves comfort, and I am a person that does not like adversity. I actually run away from adversity. Any chance I get, I could uh, avoid it at all costs. I like to be comforted. I like to have a comforter. I like to feel comfort. Uh, I love everything. And the reason why is because uh, when I think of comfort, I naturally think of like buffets. Who doesn't love a buffet? I love a great buffet. They got the chocolate fountain. They got all the meats, all the salads, all the pastas. Uh, I'm a person that loves comfort. And when it comes to adversity, I'm a person that tries to, to refrain from it. But this passage of scripture that we have here is finding the joy through adversity. I wanted to give a, a, a couple of uh, ideas or kind of some background knowledge that happened. Uh, this is about the Apostle Paul. And one perspective is that he's writing this particular uh, uh, book of the Bible while he's in prison. And if that doesn't help change your perspective about things, I don't know what does. See, he wrote this passage when he was in chains, and he's talking about the adversity that he was experiencing. Not only was he um, in chains and in prison for preaching the gospel, he was also being slandered against around uh, the churches during this time. And so we see here in Philippians chapter 1 
verses 15 through 30, we see Paul's perspective. Now, for time's sake, I'm not going to go over the whole passage, but I am going to read certain parts of it. So I, I highly recommend wherever you are, grab your phone. If you have your Bible on there, grab the Bible and, and let's dive into the word that God has to say to us. And this is Philippians chapter one, and it's verse 15. And it says this, it is true that some preach out of envy and rivalry that uh the but of others of goodwill this is verse 16 the latter do so out of love knowing that i am put there for the defense of the gospel the former preach christ out of selfish ambition not sincerely suppose that they can stir up trouble for me while i'm in chains but what does it matter the important thing is that every way whether false motives or true Christ is being preached, and because of this, I have rejoiced. I wanted to share ver uh, another verse as we go down here as well, is that one of the things that I wanted to talk about is you see here the Apostle Paul is talking about people slandering him, but even though the people are saying things against him, and he's dealing with those two adversities, he is saying that he will still rejoice. He will still rejoice. There's a couple of things that I want to talk about um, from this passage. First thing is this, is that when we talk about adversity, we have to remind ourselves the fight is the Lord's. We have to understand that when we are going through something, we have to know that God has the fight. That if you're going through adversity, that God will protect you and provide for you and support you. Understand that. When Paul was in when chains, he was sitting there writing this passage, and he said that he still knew and had the provision of the Spirit of Christ. It's interesting that he said this while he was dealing with a very huge adversity. See, it's interesting that the second thing that Paul uh, brought out in this passage of Scripture, too, is to remind us to have perspective and to have prayer. Now, you have to have perspective. Perspective is a powerful thing. Chuck Swindoll said that life is 10% uh, of what happens to you, but 90% of how you respond to it. When you respond to adversity in a Christ-like way, do you realize that that is a great testimony to those around you? Do you realize that to non-believers, when you're not retaliating like the world does, that you're not responding the way that people would normally respond, but you're responding with the joy and the peace of Christ, Do you, that is a huge testimony. And that is a huge um, way to speak out your faith in the way you respond to adversity. The third thing I would like to share in this passage of Scripture is that we are called to commitment, but we are not called to comfort. As I mentioned earlier before, I love comfort. You know me, I like to be comforted. But God has called us to be committed, even in the hardships of life. Maybe you're going through a hardship this morning. Maybe you've received a, a negative health report. Maybe there's something happening in your life that you're not really uh, fond of. During COVID, the isolation, maybe you've lost your job. If that has happened to you or whatever ways or hardships you've experienced, I'm here to tell you that still be committed to Christ. Still be committed to this church. Still be committed to pastor and to the vision of radiant life. It is the commitment that we have that God builds great perseverance in us. Paul even said it this way. He said, whether by life or death, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That even in the midst of, of, of great tragedies and great adversities, the Apostle Paul was challenging us to live for Christ. So we are called to the commitment. Do you realize that also God's called and committed to you? That if you're dealing through a hardship this morning, if you're dealing through a struggle, that commitment that God has is for you. He never promised you that he would absolve you from all the problems of this world. But what he has promised you is that he's going to walk with you in all hardships of your life. 
That's what he's promised you. That's what he's stand by you and helped you and changed you. It reminded me of the story. I have uh, worked as a hospice chaplain, and there was a lady that uh, I visited. And this woman had great faith, and she had cancer in her body. In fact, she had 65% of her whole body had cancer. There was more places in her body that had cancer that didn't. And when I visited her, I went to her home. I got on a knee and I sat with her at the bedside or, you know, stood by. And she looked at me and she said something I'll never forget. She said, my faith isn't shaken. And that's, that's powerful. And that reminds me to my last point is this, is that when we deal with adversity, it provides us unshakable faith. Not shaken faith. Maybe through adversity, you've been shaken. You've been taking step back. You've been questioning or wondering. And, and that's understandable. When we go through adversity, it's okay and understandable to question God's direction. But to sit back, if you've gone through time and time again like she did, you start to build unshakable faith. And that's something that we have to uh, take. Paul had unshakable faith. When you look at this passage of scripture, you're seeing a man who was in chains, who was slandered against, talked badly about, but he said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He also said that I rejoice regardless of motives. I rejoice that Christ is still being preached. That is unshakable faith. And I think that's the message that we can take from today, is we can take from that as we deal with adversity, that builds perseverance. And that perseverance builds unshakable faith. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what's going on in your world. Maybe you have uh, uh, haven't had a great time in 2020. Maybe there's been some tragedy. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you have lost your job, as I mentioned before. Maybe you uh, and your family, things are not going so well at home. Maybe your children are having a hard time with this distance learning and education. I know uh, we're praying for all the parents today because that is a, a unique perspective and a unique challenge that faces everyone today. Whatever the adversity that we're dealing with, remind ourselves that the fight is the Lord's, that he also is walking with you in that fight that we should have great perspective and we should continually pray. And then we also remind ourselves that our commitment is based on Christ, not on comfort, not on the realities of the environment. And lastly, when we go and we experience adversity and we come through it on the other side, we build perseverance, which gives us unshakable faith. Would you do this with me? Would you, would you bow your head with me? Uh, I'm going to close in prayer. Uh, I don't know where you're at. If, even if you're in your chair, your living room, you're laying on the floor, I'm going to tell you, hey, wake up, okay? All right? Why don't you bow your head and let's pray. If you have a need, wherever you're at, if you're in this living room today, throw up a hand and say, Vic, I got a need. I got a situation. I got something going on today. There's, there's issues in my home. There's issues in my life. If that's you, just throw your hand up. I'm going to close in prayer. But more importantly, I want you to know that God is with you, that God loves you, and that God wants the best for your life. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please get in contact with this church, get in contact with Radiant Life, get in contact with the staff, get in contact with a neighbor or friend that's a believer. God is always there and willing to allow and have relationship with you. And so this morning, I'm asking you, let's pray together in one accord, in one faith, and in unity. Let's pray. Father, I pray for those around us. I pray for the hands that were lifted. They represent needs. And I pray, God, that no matter our situation and our circumstance, you have allowed us and have relationship with us, that you want the best for our lives, that you want to provide for us, but also more importantly, you want us to live out our faith to live out our faith in you. And Father, I pray for the needs to provide support and provision. 
I pray for, for, for healing for those around us. I pray uh, for encouragement for those that are feeling isolated and full of anxiety because of maybe because of COVID. Father, I pray that you provide encouragement today. I pray that you walk with them, that you bring someone along that, that sends a text message or an email or a message or some sort of reach or connection point. I pray for every person today that they will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In your name, amen. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to, to come out. It's so great to be here. Uh, I know that we're going to be uh, continually meeting and everything as we go on in this series. Uh, I'm so glad that you took time out of your day to watch this. I pray for you and God bless you. At Radiant Life Church, our mission is to share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. If you just made the decision to follow Jesus, then I'd like to invite you to send an email to prayer at rlclodi.com so that we can send you some free resources to help you as you take the next steps in the incredible journey of following Jesus. Pastor Anyansi and I will be back with you next Sunday. And until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all oh, sing how great How great is our God There's a calm that covers me When I kneel down at your feet It's a place of healing It's a place where I find freedom There's a place my eyes can't see It's where my spirit, it longs to be It's a place of healing It's a place where I find freedom my hands till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship There's a love that lives in me It's for you, Lord, my Savior King It breaks the sin that's binding It leads me to a place of freedom my hands till I can reach heaven I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship and I'm gonna sing my song like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy I'm gonna sing my song 
like I am unashamed. I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name. I've come to worship. I've come to worship.